Good morning, my name is Maureen Chung. Welcome to Daily Devotional of June the 21st. The Bible passage is taken from Numbers chapter 27, verse 12 to 23, and the title is The Successor. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go up this mountain in the Abram range and see the land I have given the Israelites. After you have seen it, you too will be gathered to your people as your brother Aaron was. For when the community rebelled at the waters in the desert of Zin, both of you disobeyed my command to honor me as holy before their eyes. These were the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the desert of Zin. Moses said to the Lord, May the Lord, the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over this community to go out and come in before them, one who will lead them out and bring them in, so the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership, and lay your hand on him. Have him stand before Eleazar, the priest, in the entire assembly, and commission him in their presence. Give him some of your authority, so the whole Israelite community will obey him. He is to stand before Eleazar, the priest, who will obtain decisions for him by inquiring of the Urim before the Lord. At his command, he and the entire community of the Israelites will go out, and at his command, they will come in. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and had him stand before Eleazar the priest and the whole assembly. Then he laid his hands on him and commissioned him as the Lord instructed through Moses. Around the year 2010 or 2011, when I was 60 years old, I attended a seminar hosted by the Willow Creek Community Church in the Greater Toronto Area. One speaker spoke on the topic of planned pastoral succession in churches. That triggered me to actively pray and start planning. It is never easy. I asked for someone who is totally dedicated to God, who can serve Him without counting the cost. I asked for someone who can love the flock without prejudice, no matter where they came from, and regardless of their socio-economic status in society. I wanted someone who is gentle and humble in heart, like Jesus. Such shepherds are rare. Now Moses is bowing out after 40 years of leading the Israelites on their exodus journey. God didn't permit Moses to enter Canaan because Moses disobeyed him while performing the miracle of bringing water out of the rock. And that was in Numbers chapter 20, verse 1 to 13, based on the devotional on June the 19th. You can read that. Moses lost his privilege because he didn't honor God as holy before the Israelites. However, Moses is concerned about who the next leader might be. Just who will lead them out and bring them in so the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. Verse 17. God handpicked Joshua, son of Nun. But Joshua will not lead alone. He will be the military leader, while Eliezer, the high priest, will be the spiritual leader. The transition will be gradual. God instructs thus, give him some of your authority so the whole Israelite community will obey him. Verse 20. Furthermore, the high priest will obtain decisions from God by using the Urim and Thummim, sacred lots, meaning no and yes, respectively. Major decisions are essentially made by God through the sacred lots. Leadership is prescribed by boundaries because all authorities 
come from God. So Joshua is commissioned before the entire assembly. What are some qualities of Joshua that we admire? First, we met Joshua as a brave warrior in Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 16. And you can check it out in the devotional of June the 8th. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur prayed on the top of a hill, Joshua fought the Amalekites. God blessed them with a victory. Second, Moses was a faithful aide and apprentice of Moses. He accompanied Moses halfway up the Mount of Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments from God. In Exodus chapter 24, verse 13, it reads, Then Moses set out with Joshua his aid, and Moses went up on the mountain of God. On Mount Sinai, Joshua had a front row view of the awesome cloud of God. After 40 days, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the tablets, Joshua was with him. Meanwhile, the Israelites were already worshipping a golden calf that they had created in Moses' absence. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 17 to 18, it says, When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, Oh, there is the sound of war in the camp. Moses replied, It is not the sound of victory. It is not the sound of defeat. It is the sound of singing that I hear. Perhaps as a warrior, Joshua was ready for battle all the time. But Moses sensed something different, something devious. The Israelites were worshipping the idol with an orgy. Somehow Joshua was united with Moses in action. Third, as Joshua grew in faith, he longed to stay in the presence of Yahweh God. And there was a tent of meeting where Moses went to pray to God. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 9 and 11, it described Joshua's longing for God very well. It says, As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. And then the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp. But his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Joshua would retain the sense of God's presence for as long as possible. The familiar cloud on Mount Sinai was at the tent of meeting. Fourth, Joshua believed in God's promise. When the twelve spies explored Canaan for 40 days, Joshua and Caleb came back excited and voted for an immediate campaign into the fertile land of milk and honey. The others were too scared of the local giants to mount an attack. In Numbers chapter 13, related to my devotional on June the 17th, now in the end, the Israelites were punished as a group to wander in the desert for another 38 years. Joshua and Caleb included. Now in, in today's passage, Numbers chapter 27, verse 12 to 23, God picks Joshua to succeed Moses as the military leader of the Israelites. He will lead them in the conquest of Canaan. Joshua has finished his apprenticeship. Is the story of Joshua just about Joshua alone? The name Joshua means Yahweh is salvation. The Aramaic form of the name is Yahshua, which is Jesus. Take a look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Yes, Joshua took the Israelites into the promised land, but they did not enjoy full rest. They still had to conquer the land bit by bit. 
neither were they spiritually at rest. The Sabbath rest for us, the people of God, is different as God's people. We cease to work on our own in the conquest called sanctification. Sabbath rest is available by faith through the Savior, Jesus Christ. We can safely say that Joshua is a type of Jesus Christ, or Joshua foreshadows Jesus Christ, or Joshua is a prefiguration of Jesus Christ. What have I learned? First, leadership is not a one-man show. God sets boundaries for each leader because ultimately God is the supreme leader. We are to obey his decisions. Second, leaders in training need to apprentice under other spiritually mature leaders. They learn godliness, which is of a higher priority than skills. Third, leaders cast their vision, but stay with the flock, suffering with them if necessary. In Christ, I see a true leader. He defers to the Father because, as a son, he knows his boundaries. He is in communion with the Holy Trinity. He is gentle and humble, as he said, when Christ trained his disciples. He trained them mainly to follow his godliness. He taught to change worldviews, value systems, and attitudes. I cannot find records of Jesus holding a workshop on preaching, healing, and casting out demons. The disciples learned these from imitating Christ. Finally, Jesus identifies with us as sinners and suffer with us and for us. He is merciful and compassionate. Indeed, Yeshua is his name. He came to save and my destiny is with him in heaven. That will be my Sabbath rest. There are many battles in life still, but I have no fear because Christ is with me. I soldier on until I see him not as a cloud, but face to face. That will be my glorious day. Come, Jesus, come. And so, may we all have that same eternal hope. God bless you abundantly. and See you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.